Hi, I'm Dr. Rich Sherman, and I'm going to tell you what biofeedback is and what it's used for. This is a typical biofeedback device. It has sockets on the front for sensor lines to come in. For example, this is a sensor that picks up skin temperature. The signal has to go out and it goes to a computer. So there's a typical biofeedback display on the computer. It's picking up temperature. If I warm up the sensor, you can see the response on the computer. People learn from the display what their skin temperature is and how to control it. Biofeedback helps people recognize how a physiological system such as blood pressure or temperature is functioning and learn to form a habit of controlling the system so it works optimally for any particular conditions. Biofeedback is a teaching technique. This child's fingertip temperature is being recorded. You can see the little sensor taped onto her finger. She's watching the screen to relate changes in sensations from her finger to changes in hand temperature, which correlates with near surface blood flow. She's being coached to make changes in a direction which will increase blood flow. Psychophysiology and biofeedback are used in many settings, including diagnosis and treatment of clinical problems, education, performance enhancement, business, and of course, just plain self-exploration. Professions incorporating psychophysiology and biofeedback into their work include teachers, physicians, nurses, and PAs, psychologists, therapists, and counselors, physical and occupational therapists, physiotherapists, corporate trainers, coaches, and many others. Please remember that these people all work with the types of clients they're trained to work with. A teacher would not go ahead and attempt to treat a diagnosed disease unless that teacher was being directly supervised by an appropriately trained clinician. And an appropriately trained clinician would not attempt to work with students the way a teacher would unless that person had extra training. Physiological signals frequently recorded for biofeedback include respiration, heart rate, muscle tension, sweating, skin temperature, brain waves. When brain waves are fed back, the process is frequently called neurofeedback. Some of the problems which can be helped through biofeedback based interventions include problems focusing thoughts for study, testing, and sports, lack of optimal performance in sports and music due to incorrect patterns of muscle tension, poor breathing, etc., tension headaches, migraine headaches, ADHD, irritable bowel syndrome, asthma, anxiety reactions, muscle use coordination dysfunctions due to accident, stroke, etc., muscle pain in the jaws, low back and shoulders, and of course, urinary and fecal incontinence. Migraine and tension headaches. Biofeedback-based treatments for both migraine and tension headaches work. Large, long-term follow-up studies show that muscle tension and temperature biofeedback is highly effective in preventing onset of migraine and tension headaches for at least 80% of those people who learn the skills and practice them. Headache activity is usually reduced from between 80% to entirely gone among those for whom the treatment works.
There are no side effects and the treatments work as well as most medications. Adults and children who have diagnosed migraine and or tension headaches, which did not begin with a traumatic event, should consider muscle tension and temperature biofeedback. The treatment is likely to require about 10 weekly sessions along with home practice. Low back pain caused by incorrect patterns and amounts of muscle tension is frequently referred to as musculoskeletal low back pain. Back pain can have innumerable causes which are frequently not detectable. Abnormal low back muscle tension frequently makes back pain worse or causes it in the first place. When the low back muscles are kept too tense for too long, either in response to pain of some other origin or problems with their own functioning, they hurt. People with muscle tension related low back pain have many different patterns of abnormal muscle tension. So it's crucial to identify the circumstances under which different muscles show abnormal patterns of activity. These patients improve when muscle tension biofeedback is used to teach them to recognize and maintain correct patterns and levels of tension. The treatment works to the extent that the incorrect patterns and levels of tension can be corrected. The portion of the pain due to non-muscular problems doesn't change much with muscle tension biofeedback. Biofeedback is commonly used in the treatment of pelvic floor pain and dysfunctions. It has been shown to be highly effective for urinary incontinence and fecal incontinence. It can be helpful in the treatment of constipation, PMS, dysmenorrhea, and vulvar stipulitis. Learning to control breathing patterns to run and think better as well as be less anxious. The belts around the chest and abdomen respond to inhalation and exhalation. Up to half the people with anxiety disorders actually have a breathing disorder. When the breathing disorder is corrected using respiration biofeedback, the anxiety goes away with no further intervention. Biofeedback is frequently used to help people control their stress and anxiety. This is among the most common and successful uses of biofeedback heart rate variability feedback, respiration control training, and muscle tension recognition and control training all help people control anxiety. Which type of feedback is likely to work best depends on a psychophysiological profile's determination of which physiological system is most reactive to stress. EEG biofeedback, also known as neurofeedback, is used to help people recognize how their minds are functioning. Biofeedback of EEG waves recorded from different parts of the brain can help people learn to focus better, be more aware of themselves, correct ADHD problems, reduce seizures, and control drug and alcohol addiction. It's vital that you find out how solid the evidence is for effectiveness of any biofeedback-based intervention before you try it. The Association for Applied Psychophysiology and Biofeedback is the field's main professional organization. AAPB's website will guide you to the evidence for each disorder. Just look at the website, aapb.org. How do you figure out who's likely to be competent to provide biofeedback-based interventions? The simplest way for a patient or referring clinician to know that a provider has at least minimal qualifications, training, and experience is to choose someone who's certified in biofeedback or one of its subspecialties such as neurofeedback or pelvic floor disorders by the Biofeedback Certification International Alliance. 
Interested in finding a certified biofeedback provider? Interested in becoming certified in biofeedback? Look on BCIA's website. Please remember that if a provider is offering to treat a clinically diagnosed problem, be sure the person has the appropriate training and state license or certification to treat that disorder. The Behavioral Medicine Research and Training Foundation gives fantastic distance home-based courses in biofeedback, neurofeedback pain, pelvic floor disorders, and many others to professionals who want to learn more about biofeedback and other behavioral techniques. If you're a clinician, coach, or educator, we can teach you how to integrate biofeedback into your practice. Interested? Please go to biofeedbacktraining.org to see a list of our courses and find out more about biofeedback training. This is the end of your introduction to biofeedback. Thanks very much for attending. Goodbye for now.